Unlock door to Nukagen replication facility. Okay. Unlocking door. And. And. Door unlocked. Door unlocked. Zito never been here. Deactivate the malfunctioning closing cloning something or other. Uh, la la la. Deactivate the malfunctioning cloning machine. Okay, let's do that. Come on, Sito. Let's deactivate the malfunctioning cloning machine. Come on. Man, show a little respect. So you think there's going to be a ton of claw things down here? Gator claws? There's one. Don't stand in front of me, jerk. Gosh. You could stand in front of me when I'm shooting all day? I doubt it, because you'll be dead. Nuka-Cola. Nuka-Cola bottle. Who puts an empty bottle back in there? Who does that? Fever Blossom. Look at all the stuff he's got on him. Mine. Look at this place, man. What's going on down here? What is this place? Dr. McDermott's terminal. Right away. Yeah, man. Let's check out Dr. McDermott's terminal. No unread messages, Dr. McDermott. Uh, journal entry, date out of range. Huh. Uh, see, this is... Is this one of them that looks like it's in backwards order? I wonder why they do that sometimes. Let's read this oldest one. The one that looks oldest first. Journal entry XX-02-999, date out of range. It's been decades now, and my metamorphosis continues. My body is changing, adapting to the radioactive fallout in the air. Instead of my organs shutting down and my life being slowly drained away, my body is fighting back. My skin is thickened and become heavily wrinkled as if it's attempting to resist the radiation rather than allow it to penetrate my body. Rather than be horrified by the changes, I've decided to study them to learn more about the effect this is having on the human body. Perhaps I'll use the data from these studies to find a cure one day, but for now, I'm just happy to be alive. 09. How long has it been since the bombs fell and transformed me into this withered up husk of a man? I can't even remember how much time has passed. I've started talking to myself aloud now. I think this loneliness is finally getting to me. I haven't seen a friendly human in such a long time, I've almost forgotten what it's like. Trying to concentrate on work is getting more and more difficult. Maybe it would be better if I ended it all now. But then I ask myself who would protect this laboratory from those that would seek to misuse its gifts. I suspect, I suspect, I suppose I have no choice. 17. One of the two backup reactors for the laboratory died today. That leaves a single generator to run the facility's power. If that last reactor goes down, I may have to consider destroying the Nukagen replicator and abandoning the laboratory. Even though I could have already done this a long time ago, I realize that this machine could possibly be the last of its kind on Earth, meaning this could be mankind's only hope for repopulating the Earth with animals and returning the ecosystem to normal, once conditions on the surface are suitable for habitation. 21. While foraging for food and supplies today, I stumbled across the remains of an astonishing biological specimen. It was humanoid in appearance, but much larger. It had greenish colored skin and roughly human features. It appeared to be wearing clothing and had been recently killed by what looked like bullet wounds. He's talking about a super mutant, obviously. After dragging it back to the laboratory, I began an extensive examination. My conclusion was that this was the genetic mutation of a human. I can only hope that whatever caused this remarkable mutation can be extracted and used for my own experimentation. I'm entering it into the record at sample Q334. And finally, 32. My attempts at creating the Gator Claw continue. I have the correct samples of Jackson Chameleon and American Alligator in the mix, but keeping sample Q334 stable continues to elude me. If I intend to create a guardian creature for Safari Adventure, it has to be able to listen to and comprehend my commands. 
I was hoping the brain cells from Q334 would do the trick, but I've seen failure after failure. I hesitate to throw the switch and see what happens. What if I can't control it? What if it ends up attracting more attention to the park? I think I'll check the sequence a few more times, just to be sure. Well, we know how that ended up. Gator Claws, running rampant. Door. Uh, Nuka-Cola. Rounds, flip lighter. Uh, another door. We're supposed to go this way. So this is the way we're gonna go. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Well, all right. Oh, terminal, okay. Security door control. Okay, open the door. All right. Not very secure, right? Terminal's right here. Okay, in we go. What the hell? Um. Huh. Well, I'll take these blood packs. So apparently whatever we're looking for is, like, not in here. It's on the uh, other side of the wall, I guess, or something. So, maybe there were samples in here or something. Hmm, okay. Excuse me, gentlemen. Excuse me. Uh... Well... Let's go ahead and take a look in here. Got a cage here. Got some equipment here. We got Nuka Cherry here, a stem pack, Dr. McDermott Journal 47B and 53L. Let's take both of these. Look in our miscellaneous here for Dr. McDermott stuff. Uh, 47B. Let's do that one first. This is Dr. Darren McDermott, last known survivor at the Safari Adventure Replication Facility. Continuing my personal recordings. It's been... Hell, I don't know how long it's been. I think I stopped counting months ago. Or was it years? Even with the scientific equipment at my disposal, it's clear there's no going back from what I've become. The radiation from the bombs has taken its toll on my body, twisting and deforming my physical appearance. But instead of falling into despair, I've embraced the change and used it as a basis for my new cloning research. Perhaps this curse will turn out to be a blessing. I just wish Dr. Hine was here to guide my hand. I feel lost without him. Oh, poor Dr. McDermott. He misses Dr. Hine. Uh, McDermott, McDermott Journal 53L. survivor at the Safari Adventure Replication Facility, continuing my personal recordings. I've been continuing to modify the Nuka-Gen Replicator to provide a source of food. It's ironic that the very same device Nuka World was using to create its animal specimens for leisure has become integral to my survival. Using a tissue sample from a cow, I was able to replicate a viable clone, consume it as food, then use the remaining tissue to create another. I figure as long as the Nuka-Gen replicator continues to function, I'll have an endless supply of food for years to come. Dr. Hine would be proud of my accomplishment. It's sad. It's been so long I've almost forgotten what he looked like. My god, it's been decades now. Maybe even a century or more, hasn't it? Has it been so long? Well, I'll, uh, I'll continue recording later. Hmm. So, I mean, this guy, he doesn't know how long it's been since the bombs fell. Is there a way for him to find out? I mean, there's these t computer terminals all over the place. Don't any of them keep time? Not a single one of them knows what day it is? I don't know. I think there's got to be a way that he could find out. I'm going to trust you know what you're doing. Space Ooh, blood packs. Psycho. Ooh, more psycho. Well, let's look at Dr. Hines' terminal, shall we? 
No unread messages, Dr. Hein. Okay, so we'll start with the oldest one first. January 1st, 2077. I think I drank a little too much last night when ringing in the new year. Woke up right next to the Nucagen Replicator's main terminal and a program was running. It looks like I was trying to sequence an anteater with 16 giraffe-type legs, scales, four eyes, and two tails. Amusingly, even in my inebriated state, I've created a fairly viable specimen sequence that could possibly work. I don't think the animal would live very long, but my scientific curiosity says I should give it a try. I have to consult, I have to consult Dr. McDermott. Uh, February 27th. Those damn AFAD idiots are at it again. It's only been a few weeks since they vandalized my Corvega by filling it with manure. That's his, that's his car. And the security department assured me that would be the last time they were allowed anywhere near Nuka World. However, I arrived at the facility today to find Stop the Torture painted across the security door. I don't know why these morons think we're torturing animals. Anything that we need to dispose of in the laboratory is dealt with in a swift and rather humane manner. June 2nd. Thanks to Dr. McDermott's help, I've been able to isolate the segmentation issues I've been having with PB-041. The polar bears on the last segment kept coming out of the Nucogen replicator inside out and then exploding gross. I assume this was due to an incorrect sequence, but I've never seen such a violent reaction from a specimen before. It was actually a rather spectacular result, strictly from a scientific point of view. Uh, September 19th. I've had my third request for a budget increase denied due to resources being diverted to this Project Cobalt I am hearing so much about. I hope Brad Burton realizes that Safari Adventure isn't just an amusement park, it's also home to several hundred living and breathing organisms which have unique food, water, and environmental requirements. I've asked for more information on Project Cobalt, but I am continually met with denials. For all the trouble it's worth, this project better produce something big. Yeah, we've heard mention of Project Project Cobalt elsewhere in the park, but we still don't know what it is. Uh, and this is the day the bombs fell. It's about 1 a.m., and I've just received a strange message via phone that I am needed at the Angry Anaconda construction site to assist with an escaped animal that's been injured. I swear those security guys need to be more careful with their specimens. Last time this happened, not only did one of the escaped buffalo end up with a broken leg, but the other died when security had the wrong dosage in the tranquilizer darts. I'll report my findings in my next entry. So that was a heck of a day, the 23rd there. A lot of stuff happened on that day. Alright. Let's go in this next door. Over here. I think I hear a... Gator Claw, I think. Zito no like this place. No. Zito no like. Get our weapon out, because it's gonna get hairy up in here. Gonna get hairy up in here. Right? I just don't want him coming at me from every angle. You know? Oh, there's one. Albino Gator Claw. C2. Okay, now we got one up here. Whoa. Closing speed. C2, do good. Meet, 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 meet. I saw a fusion core in here, I want it. I want the aluminum canister too, for reasons I'm not even sure about. Blowtorch. Uh, here's a Dr. McDernal... <laughs> Dr. McDermott, Journal 69H. Let's take it. And we'll play it. 69H. What's 91W? That, is that the first one we read? I think that's the first one we read. Yeah, Sito gave us that one. 69H. This is Dr. Darren McDermott, last known survivor of the 
Safari Adventure Replication Facility, continuing my personal recordings. I ventured outside today and almost got spotted by a group of wasteland scavengers that had wandered into Safari Adventure. Therefore, against my own better judgment, I'm going to attempt to splice a few of the more dangerous samples I have left in cold storage. I need to use the Nucagen Replicator to create some sort of specimen that's formidable, yet trainable. Something that can protect me, but most importantly, protect this facility. It will take some time to work out the chemistry and mathematics of the data, but I'm confident I can create a viable specimen within a few years. I know Dr. Hein would have objected to this course of action, but he isn't here. And I can't let this equipment fall into the wrong hands. Well, it's not going to, because I'm going to take care of it right here. Uh, we can unlock it with Dr. Hines passcode. Do we have Dr. Hines passcode? Oh, here's a trunk. Rounds, rounds, grenade, pulse mine, pipe pistol, something, something. This is the sound effect it makes. Sounds like there's stuff sprouting up around us. Gator claw nest. Oh my. Huh. Gator claw nest. Oh, I don't think I looted him. Yeah, I did. Okay. Now well, let's see what happens if we interact with this thing. I guess we have the passcode. Log in. System status active. Program running. McDermott 987GC114 Gator claw. Disable program history. Let's read that first. Uh, we'll start at the bottom. 099. Uh, Codename none. Subject survived incubation period, but exhibited extreme levels of ionizing radiation. The contamination makes the subject too dangerous for command recognition patterns. Sample remitted to incinerator. Next attempt will adjust formula mixture from sample Q334 and will provide better shielding for the segmentation chamber. Yes, exactly. Uh, 109. Subject failed to survive the incubation period. Cellular breakdown occurred within one hour of sequencing. Sample remitted to incinerator. Next attempt will adjust formula mixture from sample Q334. And 114. This one's called Gator Claw. Subject has survived the incubation period, but appears to be in a highly volatile and aggressive state. Infusion of command recognition patterns appears impossible. Recommend termination of subject and resequencing after study period in isolation. Sample Q334 continues to be unstable and unpredictable. Alright, let's disable the current replication procedure. Okay, we did it. Project or procedure Gator Claw terminated. Please input new commands. Uh, or we could resume it. <laughs> okay, so. Ah! I shut off the cloning machine in the Safari Adventure, so no more Gator Claws will be made. I just need to find and kill the remaining Gator Claws. Clear Safari Adventure of remaining Gator Claws. So far we've destroyed 13 of them, but there are 21 total, so we've got 8 more left to go. And they really haven't posed any threat to us at all, I don't feel like. Um, so... Just take out this one here real quick. Oh, there's another one. See, quit running in front of my gun, man. Okay. Okay. Six more. Ooh, Nuka Cola Quantum. Delicious. Ooh, good rounds. Good rounds. Fusion cells, very good. Sito, you doing alright, man? Looking healthy. Well, he's level 82. He ain't messing around, man. It's a good thing he's a friend. Gator Claw stuff. Gator Claw stuff. Ooh. Hmm, that might go somewhere. There's a terminal. It's a box. The rat away. What's up with this terminal? Let's check it out. Remote door control? What door? What door are we talking about? Is there a door in here? Aha! Okay. So that, that takes us back out to Nuka World. Alright, we're not going to use that right now, because we're not done looking around in here. At least I don't think we are. Let's 
pointing us upstairs. As a matter of fact, uh, I guess the rest of the Gator Claws are out in Nuka World, right? They're not in here in this facility. I want that aluminum canister. Sure you want to yes, I'm that. sure. Mentats, mentats. Small baby bottle and a pencil. I'm not interested in either one of those things. That's where we came in. Let's see what's up here. Uh, here's some Rad-X. Can always use rat more Rad-X. Uh, steamer trunk. It's got some rounds. Bottle cap, pistol. I don't need the chest piece. Mentats. Oh, now I'm carrying too much. I had to go pick up too much stuff. Well, yeah, it happens. I'm not gonna fret over it. Rat away. Mentats. Okay, well, uh, it might be it for this facility, huh? I don't think there's any place else to explore in here. This is another nest. It's not. So that's the way we came in. And I don't think there's anything else for us to look at over here. That conveyor belt thing in there. It's weird how this one gator claw nest here. Oh, here's another one. Okay. Alright, cool. Any other nests? This might be a nest, right? Yeah, we'll take this stuff. Apparently gator claws like to collect 762 rounds. Okay. So now... We'll go ahead and use this to open this door, and we'll go out this way just to see where it takes us. Unlock door. Accessing door. Right, let's go see if the door is open. Back out to Nuka World. I hope it's not nighttime. I don't want it to be nighttime. I want it to be daytime so I can see what the heck I'm doing. And it's nighttime. Something running around over there. So that's where we. That's the door we just came out. Alright. So you can see that the Gator Claws are all marked on our map. We will take care of the Gator Claws next time because it's time for me to end my play session. I'm just going to kind of camp out right here. Maybe take a nap or something. As always, I thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this play session. If you did, won't you let me know? You can just leave me a like or a comment. I really do like hearing from you guys. So I appreciate every comment you leave me. Thanks a lot for doing that. If you've uh, stumbled across this video and you're not a subscriber, uh, why not go back to episode number one and start from the beginning? <laughs> or uh, subscribe to my channel. That would be great too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you will join me again in the next episode.